Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and this is going to be another video in the Let's Code series where I do not explain much, uh, at least not the whole context, uh, where I mainly just code and show you how I do things. And this one's a particular weird video coming up. But before we go into details, this is certainly not a video for beginners. So um, if you are in that audience, sorry, there will be other videos for beginners coming in the next couple of weeks and months, but this is not one of those. Uh, it is rather for advanced VBA programmers who would like to broaden their horizon. So it's a bit of a weird one coming up. I recently bought a book. It's called 99 Bottles of OOP and it's a practical guide to object-oriented design and particularly to write um, good code, code that is easy to maintain and easy to read and easy to change. And I'm very curious, I did not read this book yet because there is a slight challenge at the beginning. Um, the whole book is centered around the song 99 Bottles of Beer. Not sure if you know it. Let's look at the lyrics here for a second. Uh, this is basically the song and you will see in a minute why it's in a comment here. Um, it's just 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. Take one down and pass it around. 98 bottles of beer on the wall. Well, sorry, uh, I'm not really a good singer. Anyways, uh, this was the first verse and that is repeated with one bottle less over and over again until you reach uh, the end of the song, which is then here and um, with with no more bottles of beer, yeah, you go to the store and buy uh, some more, yeah. Then then it starts all over again if you really like to. And the book is centered around that song and the coding exercise and coding challenge is to write code to output the whole text of the song. And as I said, the, the challenge um, is to to deal with that problem before reading the book and that's what i'm going to do right now i'm trying to work on this challenge and uh, it is suggested you just work 30 minutes on it and that's about what i will do and and well i don't know let's see how far we get um so I think um, before we get started, just, just one more thing from the book there were test cases to test that your code is correctly working. They were originally in Ruby because that is a Ruby book mostly, um, but I converted these test cases to uh, VBA using um, my own unit testing framework for VBA that, that is publicly available. I'm going to put a link somewhere in, in the description of the video. Okay, um, let's look at the test. That is the first test. There are many more. These are commented out because they will not compile yet because we don't have the, the code that um, is required for them to compile. But the first one is this, and you should go about this challenge enabling one test after the other, only after the previous tests all pass. So it's all test-driven development and incremental development. And that's what we are going to do here. I already created a class bottles that, that is basically the, the core class that is going to do that. And, and there is a slight trick in that to, to use that if we go from here. The, the actual method call is this. It goes bottles, new instance and verse, and then it uh, passes on the number of bottles for the verse. And to make that work, I created the new instance class and I did some dodgy stuff to make that work. And I'm not going to go into that detail now. You can 
simply put that method into any normal standard module and create the class without it um, and then it will work all the same. So I'm not going into this detail. But um, let's finally get started. I run a timer here for 30 minutes. So that, that is the deadline. Well, no more words. Getting started with coding now. Okay. This is the first test. And if we debug compile, we get an error because the method verse is not there yet. So we should first write that and it should be a function um, verse and it should get the number of bottles as an integer and it should return a string. So now we compile and it works. And now I'm going to run my access unit test runner and you see one test that is the test we just saw and I started and of course the test failed uh, it says why expected 99 bottles of beer as return value of that function and that is obviously not what the function returns now um, let's start really on the cheap side we see here what is the expected value so go quickly and make the very first test pass. Here we are. That was an easy one, I guess, but we need to run it. That is mandatory. So start and we see success, the test passed. That is easy. So let's go to our test class and uncomment the next test and now it's where it's getting interesting we compile it does work that was expected um, I just close that and reopen it to pick up the new test start it again and now of course um, the first test has passed but the second failed because it does not work and now the real work begins oh and I'm going to cut out uh, uh, any sections where I'm just thinking because I knew of the challenge in advance, of course, but I didn't prepare in any way. So I'm as unprepared as you are and I probably need a lot of thinking to get, get this going. And then I'll cut that out and continue the video when, when I'm ready to do something actually or talk about something actually. Okay, okay, I've got an idea how to do that. Um, how to make the second um, second test pass. Um, so I'm going to to use a slight helper tool that that, that is um, I I had that in mind already before. Uh, that is the print function and I'll show you right quickly how it works. Um, it's just getting a string argument and the important bit is this placeholder. And there can be any placeholders in there and they will be replaced with the arguments um, following that. And I can of course use several placeholders and then they will all get replaced. And I'm going to use that because that seems to be very helpful to not repeat the, the string concatenation stuff all the time. But uh, that is going to be the only helper here I'm going to use. So back to our bottles class, I'm going to put the two lines here as constants. So this is going to be the first line and I'm going to get another con second line also as string that's going to be 
be this one. Um, count second line, what's the problem? There's underscore missing. So, and I'm going to use my placeholder here. Another placeholder here. So what we are going to do is um, saying the red ball short for return value. That's my return buffer for this function. And I'll say the return value, oops, red. What is going on here, red? It's going to be printf, that's my uh, function and its first line. And then I pass in the number of bottles. Copy that here. That is return value and print second line number of bottles minus one. So and finally, the verse function should return the return value. And I think that might do it already. So let's see. I fire up the test runner and start and it passes. So I have two tests covered. So let's uncomment another test. And that's going to fail because it's expecting that um, that the code can detect that there's only one and you need to singular for uh, the bottle term. Okay, but uh, make sure it actually fails. So sure, the first two pass and this failed. Okay, back to our class. I'm going to get rid of that and maybe switch to the procedure view. So we need to handle the, the singular and plural of bottles. This is a string and it is bottle. If number is not one, then oh, we need a return value. Uh, the return value is the container name. Um, and we are going to append an S at the end. If the number is exactly zero, and then we return that value. So this should do it. Um, let's focus on, on our output of the verses. Now, this is going to be the container term. So we need to remove that. And we need to put the placeholder in here as well. So that, that are all occurrences of the container. Now, the first argument is the number of bottles and the second one is get container term for number of bottles. Oh, that's a closing parenthesis missing. So um, now I would extract 
that here and just say number of bottles equals number of bottles minus one. And put it here and once again get container term for number of bottles. So a little bit of refactoring and I can compile the stuff and now I'm going to run my test again. Now all three of those um, of those methods of those tests pass. That is going pretty well. Now um, continue with one more test. I uncomment that and you see it's getting um, more difficult than before. Just for the sake of it, we run the test, it fails. So now I'm going to, to copy that to have it in plain view in the class here. That is the expected output now. Okay, uh, well, the, the main difficulty here is that the no more is now used instead of a numeric zero. So we need to find a text representation of our uh, number of bottles. That shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, bloody bloody stuff um, no 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 it's it's going it's going to be easy yeah private function number representation number text representation so number as integer and that return value is going to be a string and if number equals zero, then oh, we need a return value as string. So then this is going to be no more, else it's going to be simply the number. And we, we could do an explicit conversion to, to convert it to a string. So now if we use the number text representation, then it should work already if we put this here, number text representation here. And also here. So what did I do wrong? Parenthesis missing. So I compile. That works fine. And now let's run our test. Oh, so um, what is the problem? That, that is going to be a bit of a problem because I obviously it's failed. So there must be something wrong, but actually I don't really see what's wrong here. Um, but that is something I also like about having unit tests here. I just put a breakpoint in here um, and run that again. And we are immediately here at the um, location where the problem is and we can easily put in our variables and then compare what is different. Oh, I see. It, it is addressing the, the bottle with it and one explicitly. Oh, 
take it down and pass it around. Yeah, I didn't notice that at all. So this is an example how useful good unit tests are. They, they help you to find bugs instantly. And that would have been a bug that I would never have spotted if I would have manually tested that. So, okay, but let's focus on the problem. Um, take one down, take it down. Um, oh, well, then my English slightly failing me here in finding the proper, the proper naming. Oh, that is lovely. Well, uh, I, I've cut a bit out because access just totally crashed and I had to restart. And luckily we, I saved the stuff and we are exactly where we left off. But uh, if something in, in the video seems different because windows moved and, and bits, then it's because I had to restart access. But you didn't miss anything in between. Okay, now let's focus on the on the bit of the the bloody I don't know the English grammar to address that term correctly private function we need another function to take one take it is that a particle so, so sorry English people if that is grammatically incorrect I will name that get particle. If I had more time, I would look that up. But for now, it should be good enough. So, it falls as string. If number equals zero, then our return value will be it and else our return value will be one and get particle is the return value and yeah the locals window should go Ha! Huh. And, and here's another gotcha. Um, I, I reduced the number of bottles already, so I can't use it here because that refers to the previous line, but it's, it's not too bad, but uh, it's getting a bit tiresome here reading the arguments, so I'm going to put them on separate lines here. A uh, number of bottles. So this is get particle and this is number of bottles plus one because we are referring to the original number of bottles before it had been uh, reduced. So Maybe that's doing it already. Let's run it. Yes, success. Okay. And we, we go ahead for just another test here. Um, that is the final verse. Yeah, just just copy and paste that over to have it side by side here, just for for me to see that. No more bottles. The no more is covered, and then we have a completely new line. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm afraid I, we need an an if construct here if number of bottles is less than 
zero, no, 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 no. If greater equals zero, I, I mean, the the technical result would would be the same, but I rather have the more common clause first in an if then else statement. Usually, um, I don't don't do that religiously. So. Mm, that is going to be the final line and and we can just there's nothing that there's nothing changing there so that, that that is just the final line we appended here no worries okay let's run the test fail Yeah, okay. Um, once again, to, to get to the root of the problem, I put a breakpoint in there. And let's look at expected and let's look at what our bottles class is generating. So what is the problem? The, the casing at the beginning, not entirely sure if this is the problem. So we need to use proper case. Oh my. You see, that, that, that is the whole thing here is something that uh, looked like a trivial task to do. And the 30 minutes are almost up, less than a minute left, and we are not done yet. That the question is how to detect that some... Uh, that, that, that is the bell, that the thing is over. The problem here is how to detect that my placeholder is going up at the beginning of the line and should be uppercase. And that is non-trivial, I'd say. Well, anyways, uh, the time is up. So I completed my challenge because it was not really required to complete the whole stuff. Um, but um, yeah, well, um, it, it was required to write down how far we got. And I, I put down a note on the side um, that I got to the case problem because that will be something that it will will kind of discussed in the book later how far you got and stuff. So I'm allowed to continue in in the challenge, but we I should kind of put down where the thirty minutes time limit ended. So I hope you enjoyed this slightly weird video. I certainly enjoyed writing the code and, and speaking about it and doing it. And I, I would really love you, uh, it if you would, if you watched the, the video to the end, if you would put in your thoughts and ideas into the comments. And I would really love to, to read that. And I will read every comment. I cannot always um, answer to every comment uh, and reply, um, but I definitely read every comment. So, okay, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye, until next time.